Each door you open here leads to another copy of this backrooms level, and it keeps going and going and going. Hey everyone, this is Brugly, and today I'm going to be explaining backrooms level 988, aka Freeze Frame. This one is trippy and confusing and massive, and it might be the biggest one ever. It's very liminal as well, and overall it's a very interesting level. I know you're going to enjoy it without further ado. Let's hop into the explanation, shall we? So level 988 is classified as a class 0 difficulty, and it's safe and secure, and it's devoid of dangerous entities, which is a good start. The level itself, though, starts with a content warning that warns of slightly dark themes, of depression and that kind of thing, so be wary of that if you don't like it. The level itself changes a lot, and as I said in the intro, it is huge and expansive and it just never seems to stop, but at its basic form, it looks like a small kitchen inside of a cabin. This entire area seems very liminal and very familiar. The first kitchen area where you'll be is where everyone gets sent when they come to the level. You'll spawn in here in this cabin and you'll be in the kitchen. You can explore the rest of the cabin as well and you might find a bedroom or another bathroom or something like that, but the main part of the level is the kitchen area. And it's got kitchen stuff like stoves and appliances and cabinets and that sort of thing, but it's just a small kitchen. Nothing special. Well, it's about to get really weird now, so uh, buckle up. If you look around the corner of the kitchen, you'll find a window that looks out over a field. And you're going to want to keep that field in mind because I'll talk about it later. Another look around the kitchen, and you'll notice a door that's by the dining room table. If you open up that door and walk through it, you'll actually be inside of another kitchen. That looks almost identical to the first one, just with a few minor differences that you can barely notice. These differences can be as small as a chair being moved to a different place, or a picture frame being gone off the wall. Just really small stuff, stuff that you won't really notice. If you look out the window in this new kitchen, you'll still see that field outside too. But it also has small differences from the last time. And each of these different zones that you'll come to when you walk through that kitchen door will be different. And these zones are known as snapshots. And there are thousands and millions and millions of them. Literally. So now that you're in this new kitchen, you'll see another door, and you can open that door too. And if you walk through it, you'll be in another kitchen that looks similar to the previous one. The changes between kitchens tend to get more and more noticeable the further you go into this level, and up until the entire thing will just look completely different and not even like a cabin anymore. You can seemingly walk through doors for an infinite amount of time and you'll just keep going and getting new kitchens and new environments outside forever and ever and ever. But you need to be careful doing this because it can get dark if you get too deep into the level. These kitchens can have a huge assortment of food and supplies inside the cabinets and these can be things like car keys and canned food and there's also been kids toys found and, and you can actually take these items with you but the interesting thing is once you leave that kitchen, the items respawn exactly where they were if you took one. The outdoor area that I hinted at earlier starts out as a sparse looking field with a few trees dotting its borders and a little mist off in the distance. Sometimes there might be a random barn or a random tractor in that field as well, but with all these snapshots, the outside can change just like the inside does. The main way these outdoor areas change is that they can also change seasons with each snapshot. So the first one you spawn in could be in the winter outside with snow on the ground and stuff. And then you walk through the kitchen door to get to the next snapshot and the outside area it could be summertime with a hot sun and thick trees. Just depends. There can also be rain and snow in these snapshots too, as well as fog or mist. But the rain and the snow will actually be frozen in mid-air when you're looking at them from inside the cabin, almost as if you're looking at a huge picture of something. But once you go outside and once you interact with that rain, it'll start coming down like normal. But you have to go outside and touch it for it to do that, which is pretty weird. If you walk outside in these snapshots to the edge of the field, you'll actually be knocked unconscious by the level itself, and you'll wake up somewhere else inside of that field, which proves that these outdoor spaces are not infinite and you can't escape through them the only way you can go to a different snapshot is through the door in the kitchen inside the cabin throughout these snapshots there is a really weird anomaly that happens with a clock now this clock is a grandfather clock which you know those big loud ones that swing back and forth 
you know what I'm talking about. It can be seen in different places throughout each different snapshot. Sometimes it's inside the cabin, sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's floating in the air. It just depends. It looks like a regular old clock from real life, but the weird thing is is that you can hear it's ticking throughout all of the level even if you can't see the clock. And you'll know you're getting closer to the clock when the ticking gets louder. The clocks have been seen anywhere from shoved into a tree in the outside area to inside of the kitchen cabinets inside of the cabin. So there's no real rhyme or reason to their behavior, it's just completely random. The clock also seems to be indestructible, and if you try to break it or move it, you'll instantly fall unconscious for a few minutes, just like if you tried to walk to the border of the outside area, you'll also be knocked unconscious. Which is weird that this level likes knocking people unconscious. I don't know about that. The clock also isn't even showing the right time, because it could say that the time is 2pm, but the snapshot you're inside of looks dark outside. And obviously it's not dark at 2pm, so that just means the clock is wrong. And because of all this random stuff, it's been deemed that the clocks are useless and just a weird quirk of the level. But it might have something more sinister to do that we don't know of. Let me know your thoughts below. What do the clocks mean? Now, as far as the entities here, there's actually been an entire family of facelings that have been seen in many of the snapshots. They've been nicknamed the Smith family, and there are four of them, an entire family, as well as a hound type entity that seems to be their dog. The family has been seen doing everyday tasks inside of different snapshots shots like walking in the kitchen or cooking or playing outside and each time you see them the facings will be frozen in time just like the snow and the rain is outside is frozen the family members movements are also frozen they never move but you can kind of see what they're doing just by their surroundings like one snapshot the mother faceling is obviously cooking something even though she's just standing there with a pot in front of her you can actually kind of move them around like rag dolls if you want to and manipulate the entire snapshot but i feel like that's pretty strange i don't know the entire thing is just very weird to see it's almost like you're taking a walk through the memories of this family or something but you're viewing it through pictures that you can walk through i don't know it's weird as i said earlier there's probably an infinite amount of these snapshot realities that all look different in their own way and a ton of them have been actually documented but i'm not going to go over all of them because the video will be like five hours long i mean there's literally hundreds of them documented so i'll leave the link below if you want to go check them all out for yourself but i will go over some of the crazier ones right now these are the ones that I think are the coolest. So snapshot number 25 seems to be a Christmas snapshot where there's a kitchen that's decorated for Christmas and the rest of the cabin is also decorated for Christmas and the outdoor area has snow on it and you know it just feels like Christmas Eve. The family of facelings is in this snapshot and you can see them in the kitchen preparing a turkey to eat but since they're frozen in time you can actually steal some of that turkey if you want to but to get to this snapshot you have to walk through 25 different doors so snapshot 168 Eight seems to take place inside of the summer during a huge thunderstorm and the field outside of the cabin seems to be wet with rain in this snapshot and the family isn't here in this one the wanderer who explored these snapshots thinks they're on vacation during this one so now the deeper the snapshots get the more dark and disturbing some of these realities become like in snapshot 472 the dad faceling seems to not be alive anymore cough cough and the vibe just starts to get really dark and gloomy and empty and the level and cabin seems to be more decayed and old and at snapshot 1000 the house seems empty and barren and the walls are all closing in and there's no windows and everything has a layer of dust on it and the clock inside of the kitchen is making a loud ticking noise the family is gone nowhere to be seen and it almost is like this entire level has been abandoned by them so yeah as you can see the deeper you get in these snapshots the worse it gets and there are more past that snapshot 1000 they've just yet to be explored so the entire level seems to be just this infinite exploration of a family's memories though it's like these snapshots that you can walk into are memories from their past like christmas day and summer and stuff like that and each snapshot seems to be a picture that you can actually walk through and explore that's why the people are frozen and that's why the rain is frozen but you're not it's very interesting to me and it might be more disturbing than its class zero difficulty shows. I don't think it really needs a class zero. I think it's actually pretty dangerous because you could get lost in these realities. I think it would be awful to be stuck in this never ending expanse of doors and kitchens that change each time you get to them. I think it would just really mess with my mind. I don't know. So to escape this level before you go, 
insane. You actually can find a burger in the 87th snapshot to be sent on to level 213. That's the easiest way to exit. Just go find the burger. Not that hard. But you do have to go through 87 different realities to get here. So, if you want to enter this place, for whatever reason, you can no-clip through level 131. Just beware that you'll be stuck here for a while, because you got to go through all those snapshots to get out, and it could take a toll on your mental health if you let it. That's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I think this one was an amazing concept. I love the liminal aspect of the cabin and the outside. And I also really like the concept that you, you know, can keep going through these infinite, like, wormholes and Alice in the Wonderland type things. You know, opening doors and going to new realities. I love that concept and I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you for watching to the end. Check below for the links to my vlog channel. And Spoogly, if you want more content from me, I upload on those channels often. So if you want to, you know, see more of me, I'm over there, man. And make sure you have your noties on for the Broogly channel because I have a ton of bangers coming out soon. I'm on the road to 1 million subs and I can't wait to hit it. You know what's happening when I do. I'm going to the level 188 picture location. So if you want to be a part of that, I'm going to get there. I'm so close. It's going to happen this year. I'm just so excited. I love and appreciate all of you. Make sure you tell somebody that you love and appreciate them. Life is too short to not to. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video. Peace.